welcome my dear students to part 3 of structure of atom this lesson is mainly aimed at students who are doing their uh, GCSEs or 9th and 10th of the Indian curriculum structure of atom we've had we have already got two videos on the channel the third part deals with electronic configuration what do we mean by electronic configuration let us suppose we have a school where there are 100 students. Now, we cannot put all 100 students in one class and expect them to study at the same level. We need to segregate them according to their ability level, according to their age group, according to their understanding level. And that is what is called configuration. That means arranging the electrons in an atom in the different shells is what we call as electronic configuration. Now again, this cannot be done at random. You cannot have uh, 10 students in one class and then 50 in the other and then maybe two in the third one. What we need to do is we need to have a certain uh, number, certain fixed number. Okay, we cannot have more than 10 students in a class. We cannot have less than five students in a class. So those are the limitations that we put. Now those limitations when we talk about electrons are given according to the 2n square rule. What is the 2n square rule? n stands for the number of the orbit. In the earlier lessons we have done an electron has nucleus in the middle which has the proton and the neutron. The electrons are present outside in shells also called as energy levels. These shells are numbered as 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on and so forth or they are also named alphabetically K, L, M, N and so on. N denotes the number of the orbit. So how many electrons can be present in the first orbit or the first energy level or the first shell? n is 1 over here, 2n square, so 2 into n into n, here n is 1, so we have 2 electrons. Now mind you, that means the first energy level or the first shell can have maximum of 2. It can have 1 also, it can have none also, but the maximum that it can hold is 2. Let us come to the second energy level, n is 2 over here. 2 into 2 into 2 gives me the number 8. So we have total of 8 electrons possible in the second energy level. Would you like to calculate how many electrons would be there in the third shell or the third energy level? That means the value of n here would be 3. So we have n is 3. So what will be the maximum number of electrons in the third energy level? Please calculate. Okay, calculate the fourth one. How many electrons are possible in the fourth energy level where n is equals to 4? So that means the formula that you will apply again is 2n square. That means 2 into 4 into 4. Based on this, we will try a few examples here. And starting with the first element that is hydrogen which has an atomic number of 1. We know that we determine the number of electrons in any atom by the atomic number which is written as a subscript that is at the bottom of this. The mass number is given by the top number that is called as the superscript. So each of these first 20 elements that I have written here on the board, the element at the bottom is the subscript. So the number of electrons in hydrogen is 1, in helium it is 2. In lithium it is 3, beryllium it will be, yes, give it a try, boron it will be 5, magnesium the number of electrons is 12, argon 18. So likewise we can, we will attempt the electronic configuration of the first 20 elements. Starting with the first one, electronic configuration, obviously it is 1, it is 1 electron, so the elect, the Energy levels will be filled up 
in the order of increasing energy. That means the electron will first go to the energy level one. So when you actually start school at the age of three or four or five, when you actually start school, you always start with nursery, then move on to the next level that is your kg, then go on to first, second and so on. So same way, the electrons in an atom are always filled in the order of increasing energy. So we have the lowest energy associated with the first, followed by second, third, fourth and so on. So hydrogen, the electronic configuration will be one. Helium two electrons. So electronic configuration is two because the maximum capacity of the first energy level is two. Come to lithium. At electron number is three because atomic number is three. So number of electrons is also three. We cannot put three in the first energy level because its maximum capacity is only two. Right? So what do we do is we put two electrons in the first energy level out of this, now one remains and that goes to the second energy level. Let's try beryllium. Electronic configuration, number of electrons is 4. So electronic configuration would be 2 and a 2. Now I would advise you to try the electronic configuration of boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. I'll give, I will not speak for the next one minute and give you time to attempt the electronic configuration of these elements because you actually learn by doing. So try these four. If you have attempted, very good. So we have the electronic configuration of boron 2,3, carbon 2,4, nitrogen 2,5, oxygen 2,6. Notice that I am separating the electrons in different energy levels by a comma. Fluorine is 2,7. Come to sodium. Number of electrons is 11. Would you like to try the electronic configuration of sodium, atomic number 11? Follow the same rules. Remember that the maximum capacity of the second energy level is only 8. You cannot put more than 8 electrons in the second energy level. So what do you do? Give it a go. Try sodium. Okay. So we have electrons 11, first energy level 2, second energy level would be not 9, it will be 8 because the maximum capacity of second energy level is 8. So the third energy level gets only 1 electron, 2 plus 8 makes 10, 10 plus 1 makes it 11. On similar lines, can you try can you try and write the electronic configuration of elements magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, and chlorine? It is in your best interest to try and write the electronic configuration while we are doing the topic. I know it consumes data, it consumes um, you know time but then this is the best way to learn try it it will remain embedded in your mind rather than just going through the video okay so we have two eight and three two eight and four i will leave for you to do phosphorus sulfur and chlorine argon two eight eight 2 plus 8, 10. 10 plus 8 is 18. Two of the elements that I would like to discuss at this level is potassium and calcium. Potassium denoted by the symbol K and calcium denoted by the symbol Ca. Now what we have over here is 
if you try and write the electronic configuration, you should get 2, 8 and 9, right? There should be nothing wrong in that because we know that the maximum capacity of the third shell is actually 18. So, I should not be bothered about 2, 8 and 9, it should be correct. But advanced studies and which you will also do in your grade 11 is where you will come to know that once the third energy level gets 8 electrons, it tends to give the electrons to the fourth energy level. The, ele the energy level of the fourth orbit becomes lower. These are all technical details. For the time being, you will have to stick to 2, 8, 8 and 1. Once the third energy level gets 8 electrons, now the electrons will enter into the fourth energy level, again get 8 electrons and then again start filling up the third. Anyway, it is beyond the scope of your study at this level. So don't worry about it. You will have the configuration 2, 8, 8 and 1. Similarly, calcium atomic number becomes 2, 8, 8 and 2. A deeper study of this you will be doing at higher levels, which will make the points clearer. I don't want to touch it at this point, otherwise you will get confused because we are just introducing you to the concept of electrons and their distribution. How is this electronic configuration useful? It tells us a lot of things about the behavior or the nature of an atom. First of all, the, con the word that we are going to deal over here is the valence electrons and the valence shell. Valence shell is the last energy level filled. So for hydrogen, our first and last energy level is one only. So its valence shell is one. Valence electron is also one. Come to helium. Valence shell is one. Valence electrons will be two. There are two electrons in its outermost shell. Come to lithium now. Its valence shell now, which is the last energy level being filled here? So, that's the first energy level. That's the second energy level. That means our last electron has entered into the second energy level. Hence, its valence shell is 2 and valence electrons. How many electrons are there in the second energy level? Yes, it is 1. So valence shell is the second one which is being filled in the end and valence electron is one. Let us take magnesium. Its electronic configuration is two, eight and two. Let's see its valence shell. One, two, three. So its valence shell is the third one. That means it's the third energy level which is being filled in the end. Valence electrons. How many electrons are there in this shell is what is the number of valence electrons that is 2. What will be the valence shell in the case of potassium? Configuration is 2, 8, 8 and 1. Yes, the valence shell will be the fourth one and valence electrons. How many electrons in the outermost shell? That is 1. So valence electrons will be 1, number of valence shell is 4. What is the relevance of these valence electrons? They can be very, very interesting information to us about the behavior of an atom. We will generalize it, but there are exceptions. There are variations, there are exceptions. Generally, 1, Two or three valence electrons means the element will behave like a metal. You have potassium, you have sodium, you have lithium. They will all behave like metals. Except hydrogen and helium. Hydrogen is one element. 
which has characteristics of both a metal as well as a non-metal. The details of this you study in senior classes. For now, generally, we will have elements having one, two or three electrons in valence shell are metals. Four, five, six or seven electrons in the valence shell is non-metals. The nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, phosphorus, sulfur, these are all non-metals. Eight electrons in the valence shell are inert or noble gases. That means they are content in themselves. They don't undergo chemical reaction easily. That is why we call them as inert gases. Their percentage in nature is very, very low. That is why they are also called noble gases. They are chemically inert. Your exception is helium. Helium has two electrons in the valence shell, but still it is an inert gas. It does not undergo chemical reaction easily. The number of valence electrons also helps us to determine the valency of an element. Any element will try to have eight electrons in its outermost shell and that rule is called as the octet rule. Octa stands for eight. So any element having eight electrons in its valence shell will be stable and if it doesn't have it will try to acquire eight electrons in its shell in its outermost shell here the exceptions is of smaller atoms like hydrogen helium where they follow the duplet rule that means they will have only two electrons in the valence shell we call it as the duplet rule so we'll consider them separately let's take the case of magnesium it has an electronic configuration 2 8 and 2 it has two electrons in the valence shell now it wants eight there are two ways that it can acquire eight either it adds six electrons to itself or Simply do away with these two. What do you think is easier for magnesium to do? Is it easier for it to give away those two electrons or is it easier for it to take up six electrons? Remember six electrons means six negative charges also. So it needs somebody to balance that extra charge which it doesn't have. So what do you think will be the tendency of magnesium to do? Yes? it will try to give away these two electrons. So since it is giving away two electrons in order to, now its valence shell will become the second one and it will have eight electrons in it. So it will become stable. And in the process, we say that its valency will now become two. That is, it gives two electrons away in order to get an octet. And since it is giving away electrons, we say it's a plus two state. We shall talk about it later, but valency here, magnesium will be two. Take the case of aluminium, two, eight and three. Again, it will be easier for it to give up three electrons rather than acquire five more, five electrons more. So its valency becomes three. Take the case of sulfur. Now its electronic configuration is two, eight and six, right? You think is it easy for it to do away with six, six electrons? Will it do, lose these six electrons? Or is it much easier to just acquire two more electrons and finish itself? That's it. It is satisfied. It will stay. Of course, it is easier to gain two electrons. So, sulfur has a tendency to gain two electrons. Its valency will become two. 
but since it is gaining electrons its oxidation state is minus 2 it's an electronegative element that means an element having a tendency to gain electrons magnesium on the other hand will be an electro positive element that means having a tendency to lose electrons both of them have valency 2 but this is by losing electrons this is by gaining electrons take the case of chlorine 2 8 and 7 what do you think is easier for it to do gain or lose electrons yes it will gain one electron so because it is gaining one electron, it is acquiring an, an extra negative charge. That is why it's an electronegative element and its valency will also be 1. It's an electronegative element with a, an oxidation state of minus 1 or a valency of just 1. So if you notice, what we are trying, trying to do is we're just trying to balance, get 8 electrons. So if it has one electron in the valence shell, it loses that one. If it has two, it will lose that one. If it has three, it will have it will lose that one. Elements which are losing electrons will behave like metals or electropositive ions. Metals which are or sorry, elements which are gaining electrons will be electronegative ions. So if it has four, it will acquire four more. If it has 5, it acquires 3 more. If it has 6 valence electrons, it acquires 2 more. Basically, it is they are complementing each other so that they get an 8. So if it has 6 valence electrons, you know that the valency will be 2. If it has 7 valence electrons, you know that the valency will be 1. So chloride valency is 1, sulfide, sulfur valency is 2, phosphorus is 3, silicon is 4. Come to the case of argon. It's 8 electrons in the valence shell already. Content, happy, satisfied, no need to react, chill. So, its valency is 0. It doesn't undergo chemical reaction under ordinary conditions. Of course, now there are reactions which you will again study in, at higher levels that they do undergo chemical change but those are all under extreme conditions. Come to potassium, 2, 8, 8 and 1. What do you think it is? Electropositive or electronegative? Yes, electropositive. Gains or loses electrons? Yes, loses electrons. How many electrons will it lose? 1. What will be its valency? 1. So this helps us to determine the valency of the elements valency means the combining capacity of an element that means when it undergoes a chemical reaction or a chemical bond with some other element how many electrons of itself will it use up in order to form a bond like lithium can spare one electron magnesium can spare two electrons, sodium can spare one electron and so on and so forth and that is what we call as valency. If you like the video, please subscribe to Learning Chemistry is Fun on YouTube. But if you feel there's a shortcoming, I am open to feedback. Will appreciate if you can give me some honest feedback. Have a happy day.